Welcome back to the Bullet Girl Podcast. All right, I am excited to welcome Jen to the show. Welcome in, Jen. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Glad to have you. Well, why don't we get started by having you tell the audience listening or watching who you are and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So I am Jen. I am a social worker and a coach. Um, I live in Western New York with my husband and our two dogs. We are also foster parents. So we have a couple kiddos with us as well. And um, I kind of took my life from a place of working the nine to five, feeling like always in that that hamster wheel of stress and overwhelm. And about two and a half years ago, I decided to make a change and I started a coaching business. And I work with women particularly who really struggle with stress, anxiety, and burnout and help them go from a place of chaos to calm. Yes. Well, let me just say, first of all, uh, congratulations to you um, on taking that step. When I heard the hamster wheel, I immediately, <laughs> and immediately my soul was touched. <laughs> my soul, my soul lit, was touched because I feel like um, I'm really glad to have you here because I feel like there's so many people that are listening um, or watching us that are experiencing the same thing. Uh, so many people working nine to five, just in the hamster wheel. And yeah, I know that thing all, all too, um, too. Well. <laughs> and it's a shame that we, we all experience that. <laughs> yeah. It almost gives you, you, you all, I almost, went, I don't know. I almost went to fit. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> all, right. all right. Well, thank you so much for that intro. Um, well, let's talk about coaching because first of all, we know there are a lot of people in the coaching field, a lot of people who are providing great value and helping um, people all around the world. But what would you say makes uh, your uh, style of coaching different? Yeah, I think it's such a great point to make because there are so many of us. And I think we go into coaching and we're like, oh, we're going to change the world. And then there's <laughs> a million other people saying the same thing. And, you know, I had to figure out what I am an expert at. And for me, I really felt like I was an expert at figuring things out for myself. And, you know, something that I dove into really well was personal development and, using yourself to kind of move you forward in your life and career. Mm -hmm. And I think what helped me to do that was my social work background. And mm -hmm. I think that that really helps me stand out from the rest is, you know, I have the education of, um, you know, the real life ed education and the um, education from schooling of being a social worker. And being, I, I currently continue to practice as a mental health consultant. So mm -hmm. I know, you know, the signs and symptoms. If I'm not able to help you as a coach, you know what? There might be something else out there for you. And I'm okay to say that. I'm okay to refer people to the next level if what I'm doing in coaching isn't enough for them. So I think, you know, just my background in education as a social worker really um, sets me apart from some others. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that as well as you just said something also, um, as far as you're like, sometimes when you're with a coach, a coach can take you so far. And mm -hmm. for you to also be someone who has just immediately said, and if I can't give you what you need, then I will make a recommendation. And I think that's so key because I think a lot of times people stay with people, coaches yeah. too long because... Yep. They've got this like relationship and they, and they like them. It's like, it's cool. You can definitely like them, but sometimes yeah. you, if they're not giving you what you need to help you continue to elevate, then maybe it's time for you to do something different. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you can grow out of the support that you're getting and there's mm -hmm. knowing that there's a next step. And I also have a lot of people that come to me and I'll say, I'm not sure if I need a therapist or a coach. And I'll <laughs> yeah. say, let me help you figure that out. And if yeah. I'm not that person for you, that's okay. And I'm not you know, I feel like sometimes we try to fit a person into a box so that mm -hmm. we can help them. And I'm not afraid to say, you know what, you might need a therapist in this situation. So let yeah. me help you find a good one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm a firm believer that you need both. 
I mean, yes, think, exactly. Because they, they both they serve two different uh, places yeah. in your life, and I mean, you know. So as you know, um, yes. okay. So <laughs> I love that, and let's let's talk about. So one thing that I think is really um, amazing and important as we begin to talk about how others can do what you've done is first of all, is that in order for you to come to that place of saying, I don't want this for my life anymore. I want to put myself first and I want to prioritize me. Um, I want to talk about the two things because I think the two things when we say that I'm going to prioritize myself. One is I have to build some boundaries in -hmm. order to do that. And the second thing is, oh, but I don't want to feel guilty about building those boundaries. Um, So... Let's, if you can speak to what you did to become comfortable with that and what um, some tips that we might take away. Yeah. And, and I think that it's because I think that there's such a label that other people can put on yourselves and put on you. And then you start to take to heart, like by prioritizing me, I'm being selfish. And that's not the case. Right. You know, I think by setting those boundaries and by taking care of yourself, you are setting yourself up to be a better partner, to be a better friend, to be a better employee, to be a better boss, like whatever that looks like for you. Because if you're not taking care of yourself, like nothing around you is going to be okay. And I think a lot of us learn that the hard way. And so what I try to do is say, okay, let's look for the signs and symptoms that something isn't going right here. And let's mm-hmm. try to, you know, change that narrative. Like it's not bad to take care of yourself. It's not bad to, you know, put yourself first because things start to fall into place in a really nice way when you start to do that for yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, because if, if your cup isn't filled, then there's mm-hmm. no way you can serve the people around you. Like if your cup isn't full, you can't serve your clients. Yes. You can't serve your family. You yeah. can't do the things and you can't be the gym that you need to be for them. And I think that even though, even though we hear that, mm-hmm. we hear, we hear that and we know that, we know that, we know that. but there's like something on the inside that leads to people feeling like, oh man, but if I go now, if I go and I get that, that, you know, service I want done, or I get that massage, then that means I'm going to be away from, you know, my desk for, yeah. you know, oh, heaven forbid, I take a lunch break or, you know, right. or yeah, or I just take an hour away from the family. So I think, I think that's really important is that people have to remember that, Uh, And women, especially that you deserve as well. You deserve to be taken care of. And let's just be real. Oftentimes we are going to have to take care of ourselves. Like nobody's going to, you ain't going to wake up and your husband's going to be like, you know what? I bought you a (laughs) massage today right? because you look tired. You know, I (laughs) felt like you were tired and I wanted to refill your cup. No, I mean. (laughs) Right. We have to take that initiative for ourselves, or it doesn't get done. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, oh, I mean, yeah, on TV they do. Or exactly. Movies. It doesn't happen in my house. So <laughs> let's just let's just be real like that. <laughs> I mean, the most, my husband always says this to me, especially on Saturdays when I start like podcasting early. He goes, But wait, what are you doing? And I'm like, and yes, that is the voice. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm like, okay, it's Saturday. <laughs> it's what I do on Saturday mornings, <laughs> podcasting. And even last night, like I told him before we went to bed, I was like, yep, because it was late. I mean, we're like people that stay up way too late. And I was like, okay, so I got to get up in about like four hours. So I was like, what do you mean? What's Saturday? And I was like, dude, you know, it's Saturday. <laughs> and we literally keep a calendar on the refrigerator. And we- <laughs> I write down all the Saturdays where I'm going to be podcasting and it's almost like he doesn't even read it. I'm like, did you even look at it? I know. It's like, why are we wasting our time doing all of these things when it's, you know, it just goes right (laughs) above someone's head. (laughs) But but I'll say the funny thing is, is that the, the time, the time he looks at that calendar is when I travel for work. And Mm. I never realized that until, so what I do is like, 
I, I like, it's a dry erase calendar. So yeah. I'd mark each day, like when the day in new day, I mark off the, that date. And I noticed, uh, when I traveled in March and I came that week, I was gone. I came back, like he had marked the days and I was like, I think he marked the days because he missed me. And I said, I think did so you- too. <laughs> and I said, did you mark those days because you missed me? And so at first he goes, no, I just want to make sure I didn't miss picking you up at the airport. And I was like, whatever. <laughs> He's like, oh, I mean, of course I did. He I totally like, missed you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought, oh my God. Like, okay. <laughs> so net net ladies, women, <laughs> um, take care of yourself. Make your appointments and like do it because you need to do it. You need to take care of you. Yeah. But Jen, let's talk about though what happens when we don't prioritize ourselves and it leads to the big B. (laughs) The big B. B. I like it. I like that because it's terrible even to say because it's just such an icky word. Yeah. And it because it's a real, like it is it is real life. And it's I, real. and if you can just talk about yeah. that and how to avoid it. Yeah. And I, I think the biggest thing is knowing that something is going on for you and you're not really feeling it. And I mm-hmm. think it's like that internal, like gut feeling only, mm-hmm. you know, when you're going through it and we try mm-hmm. to ignore it. And I think that's the worst thing we could do. I did that. I ignored it for a lot of years and it just kept building and building and building so I would say to start looking for, you know, the signs that you're just not feeling yourself lately. And that mm-hmm. could be like on Sundays, you're waking up and dreading like, oh, Sunday is ruined because I have to go to work on Monday <laughs> and it's yeah. only Monday. Why does it feel like Friday? And you just find yourself like going through the motions, that hamster mm-hmm. wheel of just going through the motions that You know, what something that I struggled with a lot was decision fatigue. During the day, I made so many decisions. And I was to a point where when I got home, I couldn't even decide, what do you want for dinner? And I'm like, I don't know. And I don't care. I just need to eat food. And so Mm -hmm. it was that that place of just feeling exhausted from my day. And when it started to affect my home life, that's mm-hmm. that should have been my sign that something is is off and something right. is not right. Yeah. Okay. I wrote down yes, definitely decision fatigue because I think a lot of people don't really think about that. And yeah. I I remember like telling saying this to to my husband maybe last year, and mm-hmm. I said I don't know. I'm just tired of making decisions. Like yeah. I get up and I'm making a decision from the time I wake up and then I, in my job, I lead a team. So I'm constantly make, being asked questions and it's like, it's, and it's like, it's, I'm not complaining because it's my job. It's the right. role I've chosen, but it is tiring when is. you have to do that. Then you have to do that at home. Um, because you're like, at, you know, and, cause most times you're asking your partner, I'm like, so what do you live in? I don't know. I mean, whatever, what do you want to do? Like, and something, <laughs> and something as much as just getting to a place to where you're like, um, something as simple as like, what do you do want to do for date night? And when you know, cause, um, burnout, I believe is it's like a gradual growing thing. Yes. It, it starts very small and it's little things, um, where you're, where you feel off. Like you said, you kind of like, you feel the ick about certain things that yeah. Sunday scaries, right They're Like mm-hmm. you said, they take out the whole Sunday yep. and you're just in dread. This, this, uh, this hamster wheel of like, Oh God, I gotta do this again. Like, yeah. you mean I gotta do this again? And it's right. like, and, and you're right. It starts, it'll be with work and then it'll just like, seat into the other areas right. of your life. And then you're eventually you're just like tired. You start to disconnect. You just are like, I, I don't really care what y'all do. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Don't involve me. Just do Right. It. Right. If I have to show up somewhere, just tell me what time and where yeah. I probably yeah. won't be super excited or happy, but I'll be there. <laughs> My body will be there. Yeah. <laughs> and I know, and it's happened so much with women because we're always like holding things together and making sure everybody has what they need. Like you said, I mean, planning out the the lunch, the breakfast, the dinners, 
yeah. the snacks for children, you know, right. um, and my house for the fur baby, you know, making yeah. sure he's got the right, you know, things like my <laughs> side note, my fur baby's having a birthday next month. And oh. I'm over here planning like the what cake the are we? Yeah, yeah, I'm like, what cake are we gonna make? <laughs> like, what gift are we gonna get? Are we gonna decorate the house? And my husband's like, wait, when's his birthday again? I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> just just show up, okay? Just show exactly, up. Ready exactly. To smile. <laughs> but it's like I think I saw a a meme last night of like you know when you ask your partner a question and they just say, huh all the time. It's because we have a hundred tabs open in our mind. And yeah. like as women, usually we're planning our dog's birthday party and, you know, answering questions from our team and, you know, cooking dinner and getting tomorrow ready. And, you know, there's just a hundred tabs mm-hmm. open mm-hmm. and it's just mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's a very, <laughs> I think it's a perfect, like, um, analogy right to life because even when you said that and if I look at just my computer now I mean I've got way too I'm embarrassed at the number oh I am too I am too agreed so embarrassed by the number of tabs that are open I'm like oh my god like but that's how like your brain that's how our brains function because we are multitasking between things and um but you know but but all 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 humor and jokes aside about it everyone, it's important to pay attention because when you feel that feeling in your gut and you're like thinking to yourself, um, it happens, but you want to catch it because I mean, I, I experienced that in 2019 where I felt like, I don't know what you call that thing, but right. When you got all the balls in the air and the thing is like going back and forth, trying to catch everything. Absolutely. Yeah, Th- that was how I felt. And I was just at a point of by that July, I was like, I cannot do this anymore. Right. And I started and that's when I started therapy. So I started with therapy. And then the next year in 2020, I started coaching. So I had a therapist and a coach because yep. as I started to go to therapy and then I started to be able to like free up some of those like past traumas yeah. of child things that yeah. you know we're like oh so this is why I'm this way or this is why right. I respond to these things right. but then I was able to say okay but I want to focus on you know growing and evolving yeah. personally and starting this business and then that's where the coach came in exactly it's like this is why now what and yeah. I think that's a that's such a great analogy because you're right it does free up that space of you know and we don't even know what's taking up so much space in there. And that's like, you know, once you start to free that up, you are like, okay, I'm ready. Like I'm mm-hmm. open to what happens next. I'm open to where I go next. And that's yes. like the amazing part of freeing up that space. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so the other, and one, one of the things I want to uh, say to you that I really love is, and also just make sure everybody is aware. So Jen's business is called Kindfulness Coaching. And when I saw that, when it first was introduced to you, I was like, oh my God, I love this because, and then just reading what you do and how you help people. It's like, it starts with being kind to yourself. Yeah. Like yeah. you have to start um, there. And yeah. also, and then I think that just like um, bleeds out and it extends to the people um, in your sphere and the people in yep. your family, in your life. Um, but I love that. So um, where did you, why did you name your business um, that? <laughs> yeah, it's so, you know, it's so funny. And I think it's just, there's no rhyme or reason behind it. Like it's a play on mindfulness, clearly. And, mm-hmm. you know, I thought about like, you know, I, I'm somebody that, you know, has all those like fun tie dye shirts that says like, be kind (laughs) and like, they're so cute. And so one of my girlfriends was like, you should name your business kindfulness coaching. And I was like, that's a really great idea. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. And so many people think, and, and I love that you hit the nail on the head there because many people think it's like all about being kind to others. And it's not, it doesn't start there. It's about being kind to yourself, giving yourself that grace to, Mm -hmm. you know, be selfish. It's okay to be selfish. Mm -hmm. It's okay to like Mm -hmm. take time for yourself and be kind to yourself. So 
Yeah, I wish I had a better story around no, the name. I love that. But- <laughs> it's so, I mean, it's just very straightforward. It's yeah. what you would expect it to be. And especially talking to you and learning about um, your background, your story, your journey. Um, it makes so much sense. And I think it's important because we can't forget that it starts with us. Yeah. And and I think the other thing you said was giving ourselves grace. Like mm-hmm. we have to do that. We just, no matter how much we say it, we never give ourselves enough grace. Yeah. We're always beating ourselves up because yeah. we didn't get the thing done. We didn't, yeah. we didn't, we took a break. Oh my God, I took a break because right. I'm guilty. I'm I'm so guilty. I did it just this week. Someone mm-hmm. asked me um, at work, they were like, oh, what are you doing this weekend? And I was like, oh, just probably like hanging around the house. I said, I got to do work for Glow Up Girl because I gave myself like off on last Sunday and I didn't do anything. And now I'm like backed up. Up because like I traveled last week and, yeah. and I just was like I'm tired I don't do anything and, and well also I was watching golf it was Masters weekend so I was like, oh yeah oh, yeah yes. you watch here too <laughs> <laughs> and I was like I'm watching the Masters okay yeah <laughs> but it was like so I told myself this one I was like now I've got to catch up but I wasn't even you know I was already beating myself up because yeah. I chose to do something that made me feel it brought me joy to like relax and watch golf all weekend. <laughs> So, yeah. 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 And it's that guilt that comes with it. And it's like, I just need to push that guilt aside and be like, it's okay Mm -hmm. to take a break and watch the masters for a weekend. Like that filled your cup back up. Yes. Yes. And so, yeah. And so just, we, we say that to tell everybody watching or listening that it's a process. It's an ongoing process. Like we're never going to always get it just right. Um, But we do have to allow for ourselves to have grace in that moment to say, you know, I I made a mistake. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. And so it's okay. We will move on. Yeah. Um, And, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I'll work a little bit today, but I will also watch golf. Well, (laughs) exactly. Exactly. Like it's all about, it's all about integration. I, you know, so Mm -hmm. many people struggle with the word balance and I, I'm all about like the integration, like integrating mm-hmm. work into life and life into work mm-hmm. and making it flow as best you can. And some days mm-hmm. are going to be better than others and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think you like prepare for the times when, you know, like it's mm-hmm. a busy season or I need to like, yeah. I need to hunker down today because next week I want to, I'm going to hang out, you know, yeah. and, and yeah. stuff like that. So I think that's really important. So, so let's talk about, so some of the practices you've talked about, I know um, when you were making that transition, um, was it, was it hard? Um, what did you do? Like, how did you yeah. find your own like in, way yeah. of integrating things? Yeah. And I think it's all about trial and error, unfortunately. Like mm-hmm. it's all about like what works for you <laughs> might not work for me. Exactly. And, So when I'm coaching people, I'll say like, what's already working for you and how can we incorporate that even more into what you're doing? And so Mm -hmm. for me, it was very much like getting outside. I live in upstate New York. It is Mm -hmm. cold and gray and rainy a lot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially like now that we're coming out of the winter months, like getting back outside for me, taking walks with my dogs, like that's going to be like a start to my day. And so for me, it was just like, what's going to help bring back a little bit of energy in my day? Working out was really good for me. Mm -hmm. Um, Walking was really good for me. Taking a break, you know, taking Mm -hmm. time. Once I started working from home, I would find myself in my office all the time. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I'm going to go sit down in the kitchen and have lunch with my husband. And I'm going to just break things up a little bit differently. So um, it's just like, finding those routines that you can put into your daily life Mm -hmm. because we can't all leave for a massage during lunch every day. We can't, (laughs) you know, as much as I would want to, that would be fantastic. Like one, I can't afford it. And (laughs) two, I don't have the time. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what can I do in my everyday life that just shakes things up a little bit and Mm -hmm. gets me refreshed? Reading was a big thing for me. That's a huge part of my Mm self-care. I love to read either in the morning or at night. Um, it's just like a, a, a release for me. It's just like, mm-hmm. get me out of my current life and into like some fantasy. Yes. 
<laughs> I'm right there with you. I, I do. I love to read too. So it is important. And, yeah. you know, I'm like, Mm-mm, I want to read. Give me some yeah. kind of rom-com novel exactly. so that I can <laughs> go off and like go into somebody else's world. But I agree with you. I think that those are really uh, good suggestions about how to break up the day because like, yes, I, because when you work at home, like I work at home full time and like when you're at home, I love it. I love working at home. Like yeah. I never want to ever go back to any office, any anyway, right. on any planet. But right. Me either. like <laughs> but like on you're like on Tuesdays, like my husband is off on Tuesday. So I try to like eat lunch with him. And then like yeah. now that it's getting warmer again, my dog and I will go sit on the sunroom and I'll yeah. take a break out there. And it's like like you said, it's just finding these little pockets um of time yeah. to do things. Um yeah. And yes, and <laughs> and I know I I feel for you because I know you being upstate New York. Um, so like my company is based in Long Island, mm-hmm. and so um, I hear a lot of people uh, too. Like I've been up there recently; it's been like rainy or whatever, and the weather's yeah. just different. I live in Atlanta, and right. It's like we get the weather is weird. I mean, like today it's going to be about 80 degrees, but then tomorrow it's going to be like back in right. the 50s. So right. it's weird. <laughs> it's like weird for So you just, you know, you look at that and like I look at the weather like I try to approach life. It's like I just get, I dress for the day. Like yeah. whatever yeah. the day I says. Love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah like, I'm just going to like adapt and adjust yep. to it because yeah. it's going to happen whether I'm prepared for it or not. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And you have to be ready for anything. And I love that analogy. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, Jen, tell us, um, what do you find most important about the work that you do? I think the biggest thing for me is instilling confidence in the women that I work for. Just the confidence to say, like, I'm worth it. You know, I should spend time on myself. I It's okay to do this. And just giving them that confidence and and helping them to change their mindset rather than, I don't have time. I don't have the energy. Everything mm-hmm. is bad. And just changing that approach a little bit and looking at things like you said, you know, with that ability to adapt to the day. Like, mm-hmm. yes, this happened and here's what I'm going to do about it. And so helping a little bit with that resilience and confidence to mm-hmm. just you know, live a different life. Like you get to choose. Nobody else gets to choose for you. And mm-hmm. so I'm putting that in your hands. Like you get to choose how you want to do this. Like, let's make it happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yes. Because that, that that the most important thing I think for any person to hear is that they have a choice. Yeah. And I think that is uh, so key. So yeah. Key. Yeah. Right. And I think we forget that sometimes. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. I think, you know, I just think, you know, it's, it's rather unfortunate in the world, you yeah. know, where it's a lot happening. People do yep. forget that. But at the end of the day, it's you've got this one life. Yeah. And you are responsible for playing a part and uh, making it be a life that you are real happy with I mean finding joy I I prefer to say joy versus happy because I feel like happy is fleeting I mean yeah yeah but there's something about finding joy because joy can't be taken away right so um so yes all right well Jen why don't you tell everybody out there how they can work with you and how they can connect to you yeah. So you can find me on Instagram at kindfulness coaching, or you can find me on the web at kindfulnesscoaching.com. Fantastic. So we will drop those links in the show notes. Um, and, and now we're going to move into three things with Jen. I'm going to ask you three questions that helps our audience get to know you a little bit better. First one is a two-parter. How do you start and end the day? I start the day with reading. I love reading. I'm going to drink my tea. I'm going to try and read, even if it's five pages, 10 Mm -hmm. pages. And I start and I end the night with my family. Um, Family time is so important to me. And I'm going to cuddle babies. And I'm going Mm -hmm. to maybe watch some ridiculous TV with my husband. Um, Mm -hmm. But I'm going to end the day with just some quality family time. Awesome. I love that. All right. Number two is... Huh, if you could go back in time, tell us about a day you might relive. My wedding day. My 100% my wedding day. My husband and I got married in New Orleans. It's one of um our favorite places. Uh-huh. 
Um, it was a very small wedding, uh, only 30 people, our closest family and friends. Mm-hmm. It was the most perfect and wonderful day. I started my day with reading and I ended the day nice. with the people most important to me. I and love it. It was amazing. Love it. I love it. All right. And the last question is, where are you currently finding inspiration? Oh, that's a good one. I am currently finding inspiration from this foster care journey that I'm on right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has had some unexpected roller coaster rides of emotions. Mm-hmm. And I am actually feeling like there's going to be a pivot in my business to reflect some of the growth that I've had through this process. Mm-hmm. And more to come on that. But I think mm-hmm. that this journey has taught me so much about myself and the system that we live in and the children that we help take care of. It is eye-opening and heartbreaking and so much. And I I am learning and growing as, as a result of it. Mm-hmm. I love that. Awesome. Thanks. Well, Jen, I want to say, first of all, thank you so much for joining and for sharing and for your transparency with the community. It has been um, a great conversation today. Thank Um, you. And before I let you go, I'd like to ask you to leave our audience with three things you'd like them to take away from our conversation. You are not selfish for taking care of yourself. You are worth it. And it is okay to be a confident woman in America. Amen to that. (laughs) (laughs) Fantastic. Well, Jen, thank you again. You can always come back to see us at Glow Up Girl in the future. Thank you. I so appreciate it. This was so fun. Awesome. Well, stay tuned, everyone. I'll be right back.